What are they? Are they here or they have gone to heaven? Come, come quickly. What is uh, Mrs. Uh, Binet to Is she here? She's not here. Okay. Four of you will form the committee for this Passion Week. And you have only two weeks to bring it about. And whoever will be the winner will go home with one million naira. And there will be two machines for the first runner up. You have two weeks from today to execute this dream. Don't worry about it. The money will come from my pocket. You don't have to look for that money. Give it the best you can. Give it your time. Give it your creativity and your imagination. Do it like something that only a European can do. Don't do it the Nigerian way. It's my prayer that you will surprise us by the things you will do. When you, you have one week to put together what you want us to do and bring it to me any Tuesday of your choice will go through your dream and your desire. Surprisingly, I'm going to call the youngest of you all to lead this committee. You are not beginning to uh -huh. Even though you look, for, you look the youngest, you are my choice. You'll be the chairman of this program. Don't, don't let your young age bother you. Huh? At the age of 10, I told my mother one day I will build a university in our village. And she gave me the beating that panel beaters give to pan. She said, you talk like an old man. Ma, it's a gift from God. Age has nothing to do with creativity. So I am I'm expecting four of you to surprise us by the things you bring to bear during that program. Father, may you raise your wings over the four of them and open and quicken their understanding. Let them do what people do not believe they can do. And Father, whoever shall be the winner of this fashion week, may he or she be encouraged beyond measure. And that person one day, may we see him or her on an international platform. Let it be said that somebody from amongst us became internationally known. Let the journey begin. As they go from here, Father, bless them and protect them and provide all that they need. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Give them a good clap of faith. Come. You. I want a picture of those your two children. We will place them on the altar. We have placed orders. And we pray for them every day that they will not be ordinary children. Are you hearing me? Okay. As you go back, may God go with you. Give them a good clap up for everybody.
Jesus said, Dear Mammy, I'm a mamma in this saga, yeah, yeah. I can't enough. Any young I came, you. I'm a mamma in this saga, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, Dear Mammy, I'm a mamma in this saga, yeah, yeah. I can't enough. Any young I came, you. very well to represent this zone if you don't know how to dance just go back to your seats or I will stop you not more than five only five another five from here the last group another five from here the choir well if the choir will sing, then let them come from here. Are we ready? Can somebody say, all my prayers, sit down. So I want to worship my God.
Right, two of you are the best dancers. Um, Oga, come and give them twenty thousand. The two of them. During our fashion week, may your wife be the winner. Bachelors did not say anything. I said during our fashion week, may your wife be the winner. Did anybody bring a new visitor somebody who has never been here before and somebody who you led to christ anybody you led somebody to christ anybody nobody thank you for not winning my a hand what is the hand how many people did you win huh you led 100 people to Christ. What did he say? Huh? What did he say? You led 100 people to Christ and brought them here. This man. What are the other 99? Are, are they coming? Or they have gone home? Come, you are from where? Or got, from Oran? Huh? What are my officers? Come and count in the number. I don't know if you know my wife was born in Mbia Yoruan. Is this Mbia Yoruan? No. This is just Oran. Huh? Or you don't know the name of your place? Oran. Okay, come and count them.
come, Madam Uma and Pastor Joe, bring out 100,000 new notes for them. Yes, bring, give them. Okay, what is the choir mistress? Help us. Or has she gone? Huh? She gave birth to a new baby. What? She's not here today. I hope on the day of rapture she will not be absent. Wow. Uh, Oga, have you seen it? Just one bundle. No, don't, just one bundle. Don't bring two. Thank you. How many are there? 110. Come, come. Bring 10,000 more. Okay, by that one act, everybody must go home with 1,000. A day will come when some of you will give out such money with casual ease. The tallest uh, usher, come and count the money and give it to him. But make sure everybody receives a chunk of the money. For being a winner today, I now declare you will always be a winner. Amen. Don't let Satan stop you. Don't let your enemies stop you. I don't care how young you are. A young person can beat an elder. What did I say? Having won today, you will always be a winner. Amen. Father, raise an umbrella over every one of them and protect them and provide for them. Every stone the enemy, the enemy shall throw at them shall become their stepping stone to greatness. Father, may they know you personally and intimately and experientially and empirically and livingly and as a living reality. Let them know you. Let them love you. Let them obey you intelligently and intentionally. Let the miracle begin today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Can we give the Lord a clap of freedom on their behalf? Amanam, Eye na basi amanam pae. Amanam, Eye na basi amanam sosongo. Oh amanam, amanam, Eye na basi amanam sosongo. Amanam, amanam, Eye na basi amanam sosongo. Amanam, amanam, amanam. Amana, eye na basi amana so so mo. Oh amana, amana mo. Eye na basi amana so so mo. Amana, amana mo. Eye na basi amana mo so so.
all of you that stepped out to state that you obeyed what I asked you to do. The blessings of God shall follow you all the days of your life. Please continue to love this God. He is more than faithful. He is a great promise keeper. Whatever he had promised you, he will do it. As you go tonight, let the God of heaven go with you. And let an angel accompany you. And God will fight all your battles. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Can we give the Lord a good clap up for everybody? Go back to your seats. All of us, can we stand up and stand on behalf of the families we come from? There might be somebody in your family who is not doing well in life. I want you to lift him up before God this night and pray for him. Mention his name to God. Please, don't get tired of helping that your brother. Don't get tired assisting him or her. This night, remember your family where you come from. Let the picture of your family stand before you and confront every demon in that family that will not allow all of you to do well in life. This night, that yoke shall be broken. It shall be broken. It shall be broken. I want to give you only three minutes to open your mouth and tell God what you want him to do for you. There must be one particular person in that family that bothers you. And to you, he has suffered more than enough. And to you, today must be a day of new beginning. And to you, difficult things must become easy for him. Lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. I'm sure you come from a family. Look into that family. All those that the enemy will not allow them to breathe, to do well, to succeed. Lift them up before God. Ask God to fight for them.
Father, any member of our family who is sick, whatever he or she may be, may an angel be sent to that one person. Father, let that person be remembered now. And bless that person with healing sleep. Let the healing be total and complete and implicit. Wipe away the tears of this family. May they see your hand fight their battles. Whatever sin they may have committed, Father, forgive them. Let them find favor and mercy. Favor in the sight of men that matter. Favor in the sight of your angels. Fight for them. For the sake of we who are gathered here, let the yoke of the enemy be broken. Father, we are waiting for their testimonies. Hear me, O oh God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. How many of you believe God will answer this prayer? Then give him a Pentecostal African clap of him. Please, take your seat. Take your seat. There are eight people who came to this meeting depressed and unhappy and dejected. If you are one of them, can you please stand up? There are eight of you who came to this meeting unhappy and you are in tears stand up in the course of our meeting tonight I'm going to ask God to send four angels to visit you and you will see those angels those of you from Okwa West you remember in my last meeting with you, Angel visited the service and took away the load and the burden people were carrying. You will no longer carry that burden you are carrying. This God that preach shall wipe away your tears. Can we say the men like we mean it? Amen. When that time shall come, I'll let you know, but now take your seat and bring it to Bible. Let's hear the book of Luke chapter 16 verse 24. There's one more movement. Let us reverence and respect and acknowledge the peculiar concentrated presence of our God. Yes. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is will come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. 
And he said, Nay, nee, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophet, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. I had a cousin who died and met my father. He said, my father held him and cried and asked him, why would you end up here? Your brother is helping others to avoid this place. The funny thing was, he met his friend from my village. And that friend said, I came from Gabon that your mom may pray for me. I have kidney failure and liver failure, and I need Omar. My brother said to him, oh, I didn't know Omar prays for people. I know he gives money. I'm interested in that money. I don't care about his healing. He came to me and said, I need 100,000. I gave him the money. His friend came to me and said, I have come all the way from Gabon. To a few days that you may pray for me. I prayed for him. He slept under the anointing for two days. Woke up. Went to UNTH in Enugu. And the doctor said God had replaced the kidney and replaced the liver. And he organized party for the whole village. Men and brethren, it is possible to be here every day and not believe that God can use me. Do you know when I hold, like where the brother that led in worship here, ask him the crowd that came to hear me preach. There were more than 50,000. And the funny thing was, Pastor Joe, you were there. The funny thing was, as soon as I arrived, people used their phone to call others. And the crowd grew in number. I have heard our brother say over and again, don't take your relationship with Omar for granted. It is easy to say, I know him. I know him. I don't know he can pray for the sick. I know he can give money. I do the two. My sister's daughter-in-law last week had health problem that she could no longer speak nor communicate. She called me and said, my brother, I, I, I don't know where to run to. I don't know what to do. My daughter-in-law has stopped talking. She has stopped even walking. She had refused to carry her own child. And I said to her, relax. She will sleep five hours the first day, the second day, seven hours. When she wakes up, she will be as strong as a bear. She asked me, would you pray? My friend, I have grown past where I pray. I now can make declarations. And miracles will happen. Yesterday she called me and was crying. I, why are you crying? She said, you know, I, I don't think I, I thought I knew you. I don't know you very well. What did you do the other day? You didn't pray. <laughs> My friend, I can't remain uh, in class one forever. So 
forget about me. Think of the glory and the anointing and the unction of God upon my life. Those things were given for you, for your sake. I have, I have said over and again, this fellowship is for proof producers. That's why I single out that girl to lead our fashion week. Because she had become one of the proof producers we have. And you must be one of them. Forget me. It is not about me, it's about you. And this night I declare whatever demon have said no member of the family shall do well in life. That pronouncement is cancelled. That pronouncement is cancelled. In 1971, I was the first missionary to Amadou Bele University. On arrival at the gate of the university, there was this, uh, this lecturer, European. He parked his car by the gate. As I arrived, he said, Sir, God asked me to be your driver throughout your preaching in this university. You, I was a small boy at that time. You will be my driver? He said, yes. I said, okay. I jumped into his car and asked him to drive me to my cousin. We got to my cousin's house. My cousin got angry and asked him, what did this small boy tell you about himself? He's nobody. How can you be his brother? And he asked the man, how does that concern you? The car is not your own. He didn't buy the petrol. <laughs> right where you are sitting tonight. I remember your family because God is interested in your family. That limitation the enemy have placed on your family shall this night be removed. <laughs> Those who look down on you, those who say nothing good will ever come out of your family. Already this night, there are about 12 of you who will buy their first cars this year. And there's another five of you who will, who will travel out of Nigeria for the first time this year. And all your enemies will regret what they have said about you. Do you know, can you believe, 1972 I was preaching at the University of uh, Nigeria and Soccer. What is Gideon? Have you gotten that name? The name of the girl that said she was there when I preached and Jesus appeared. You have not gotten the name. Huh? I'll forgive you, but look for that name. Men and brethren, it is possible to live with an angel and not know him to be an angel. Right wherever you come from. The, the limitation the enemy has placed upon that family shall this night be broken. You can forget everything in your life, but don't forget what I've said tonight. Huh? The yoke is broken. The yoke is broken. What you could not do yesterday, you do that today.
Can we now hear the book of the book of Mark, chapter eight, verse thirty-six? Mark eight thirty-six. For what shall it profit a man? What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world? If he gains the whole world and lost his soul and lose his soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Nothing. I don't want you to miss the reward of heaven. It pains me that many of us are not soul winners. We are not even interested in the death of others. We are not interested in the lives of those who are on their way to hell. Lazarus was a hopelessly, wretchedly poor man. When the rich man died, he found himself in hell. I don't want you to be that rich man. I want you to just where you are this night, make up your mind to be a soul winner. Do I have anybody here who knows one unbeliever in his family who is on his way or her way to hell? You know him or her to be an unbeliever. And you have not confronted him with the demands and claims of Christ. This night, can you ask God to give you the boldness, the courage, the wisdom? the creativity, the imagination, the resourcefulness to confront that your brother, that your own child, and lead them to Christ. I don't know whether you know, every unbeliever in your family is a potential thief. He's a potential criminal. Therefore, you must confront him or her with the claims of Christ. I'm going to ask for those who will say to God, Father, give me the enablement. Burden me to pray for them, to pant and, and seek their salvation. Don't let me keep postponing it. Let me, let me confront them and demand their salvation from them. Give me the grace, give me the ability, give me the anointing, give me the unction. Do I have anybody who will say to God this night, but in me to be a soul winner? Give me no rest until I become a soul winner. Raise your hand very well, let me see. I'm sure you know the story of this ministry. A woman who was a wife to one of us went to Goja to buy goods. On her way back to you, armed robbers stopped them. And the first armed robber jumped into that lorry that was ferrying her back to you. She saw the young man and shouted, My son, are you an armed robber? And the boy pulled his gun and shot her and killed her. We buried her. If she knew that boy was an armed robber, do you think she would have kept quiet? No. Therefore, this night I'm looking for soul winners. Men and women who will say to God, when I see a member of my family who is an unbeliever, don't let me rest until I lead him or her to Christ. If you have that desire, compelling desire, an unquenchable desire, can you please raise up your hand and stand up. I want to pray for you. Pass me not, O gentle sea. 
My mother repented. She came back home crying. Ma, what's the matter? She said, You knew I was on my, hair, my way to hell, and you did not confront me with the claims of Christ. Ma, I told you. She said, No, you did not mix what you told me with tears. If I were you and my mother is going to hell, I'll cry every day until she repents. I don't know whether you know when somebody dies, he has died. When somebody dies, he has died. My mother cried. Ma, she said, just leave me alone. I want one more time. How many of you will promise God and promise me you will be a soul winner? Let me see your hand raised up. Tell God to open your understanding. Tell God to show you an unbeliever who is on his or her way to hell. Ask God to empower you with boldness. Tell God to give you the boldness, the courage, the determination to confront anybody you know from your family who is not yet born again. Your own child, yes. Your brother, yes. Your sister, yes. Your friend, yes. And please, don't play big girl around this call. Can you raise up your hand and repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, burden me with the desire to be a soul winner. Make me an instrument of soul winning. Don't let a member of my family go to hell. 
What shall it profit a man? If he will gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his own brother or sister. Father, let the miracle begin. Let the fire of revival burn my laziness. Father, I need, I need a partner from my family to pray with me over the family. Help me to reach them. Help me to win them for Christ. May they become my partners as I go through life. Hear me, O God. For I ask in Jesus' name. Open your eyes. I'm waiting for a testimony from you. And I'll give a price. I don't know what to, I won't promise anything now. But I'll give a price. I had a brother who lived with us here in New York. And I started a very big lucrative business for him. You know, he never showed interest in being born again. And today I regret my laziness over him. There are people in your family that you cannot really help and change them. But if you lead them to Christ, God will change them. And they will become partners with you as you go through life. When they refuse to change, there will be a pain in your neck. Do I have anybody here who has a brother and sister who is already a pain in your neck? Raise up your hand, let me see. Raise it very well. You have a brother who is a pain in your neck. And if she's a sister, she will likely marry a man. A man that will beat her and ill treat her and abuse her. And every time you hear of what the man has done, you'll cry. I want God to bring an end to that squabble. Are you on my side? I want God to bring an end to that infight. Let there be peace in your family. Father, Father, whatever sin they may have committed, forgive them. Forgive them. May your children's next act of witnessing bring them to Christ. And when they come, may they last. Whatever they are now, let an angel be sent to them. And tell them enough is enough. They have played enough. They will not continue. They must change. They must change. They must repent. They must embrace Christ. They must save this Christ. How many of you believe God has answered this prayer? Let's give him a good clap of his somebody. <laughs> Amen. Bring her to pen and bring her to paper. I'll just state four points and we shall be gone. Please, this week I want us all to pray for the family we come from. Give up your dinner and pray for members of your family. Your joy will not be full until they all become born again children. Or else there will be what? A pain in your neck. When you have a, a, a sister-in-law, a brother, who continues to say, don't let me die, send me money, don't let me die, send me money. 
you need to change your attitude towards him. Lead him to Christ. He will then become an honest man. If you leave him in that state, he will keep collecting money from you and that money will not be profitable to him. Do I have anybody who has such brother, such sister, who collects money from you always? And yet that money is not profitable to him or her. And you like God to change that situation and scenario. Anybody here? Raise that hand. Don't be afraid. We're discussing deep things of, of life. Raise your hand where? Raise your If you have such brother, sister, raise your hand. Father, you have seen this hand raised up. May you, dear Lord, bless them with an anointing that will effect a change. Father, wherever these sisters or brothers are, don't allow them to rest until they embrace Christ and save Christ and love Christ. Do it, for I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Number one, Christ's death is evidence of our justification. In those days, for God to forgive us, you have to bring the blood of a goat and you do all kinds of stupid things. But now all you are required to do is to show faith in Jesus. Faith in his finished work and you'll be forgiven. His death his death is the evidence of our justification. It is also, number two, the cause of our, of our sanctification. That he died and rose has enabled us to be sanctified. We don't have to do anything special except to believe. Come, that madam with children, stop it. They are going to cross this crowd, find a way to do it. Right where you are, his death and resurrection has justified our justification. And we are forgiven. Number three. We shall no longer remain in the grave. One day, let's see the book of John chapter 14. Let's take verse 1 down to verse 6. Yes, sir. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, if it were not so, I would have told you. I would you, have told you. I go to prepare a place for I you. I go to prepare a place for and you. And if I go and prepare a place for if you, if I go and prepare a place for I will you, come I shall come again back and receive you unto myself. I shall come back. How many of you believe he will come back for us? Raise your hand. Let me see. Wow. You remember during our miracle convention, I told you that the, the holy city of God came down. And to my surprise, God said, Oh man, everyone in attendance in that program already has a home. You remember I cried. Come on, let's give God a good clap of it.
Resurrection is the cause of our glorification. We are now somebody. Can you imagine if Jesus did not resurrect again? The world would have mocked us. They would have laughed at us. But we are justified. We are sanctified. We are glorified. Because the master resurrected. Can we give him a good clap up from somebody? If you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus personally and intimately and experientially and empirically and livingly and as a living reality, you don't want to continue like this. You want to have a relationship with him. You want him to forgive you all your sins and partner with you as you go through life. When you partner with him, he makes life easy. He fights your battles for you. He promises that no weapon sharpened against you shall prosper. He did say amen. No, I'm surprised you were quiet. Can we see the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 17? No weapon. Can somebody raise his hand and say, No weapon? No weapon. Sharpen against me against shall prosper. Shall prosper. Wow. <laughs> 
I don't know whether you have also noticed when God said this, it was with a touch of finality and a hint of conclusion and a measure of authority. He said, no weapon. Huh? No weapon. How many of you believe that no weapon aimed at you shall prosper? Raise up your hand, let me see. Then can you shout hallelujah three times? The Bible says Jesus sits on the right hand of the Father to pray for you. That means you're a big man. Is he praying for everybody? No. He's praying for you. And I want to ask, who have anybody here tonight? You don't know Jesus personally or intimately or experientially or empirically or livingly. You don't, you don't yet know Jesus as your Lord and Master. And this night you don't want to leave this hall without committing your life to Jesus. You don't want to leave this hall without becoming a born again child of God. It is the ultimate, the greatest. If you're here and you don't know Jesus personally and you want to know him this night, can you raise up your hand and come forward here? I want to pray for you. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Yes? Only one person? No. There's a young lady who raised her hand and put down that uh, bring, Stand up and come with that hand raised up. For this night, this God I preach shall partner with you as you go through life. You will not go through life alone anymore. Your name shall be written in the book of life. And this God will forgive you. And he will enable you to overcome every obstacle. If you want to be born again, can you stand up and join these three people? Come with me. At the count of two, if you don't come, we'll forget you. Everybody can't go to heaven. Or it will become overcrowded. Somebody must go to hell. And the difference is choice. If you are coming, come. Don't walk like your dad yesterday and nobody buried you. Repeat after me. Raise up your hand and repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart as my Lord, my Redeemer. Write my name in the book of life and grant me the assurance of my salvation and the joy of my salvation. Forgive me all my sins and cleanse me and make my life white as snow. In Jesus' name. Father, as many as have said this prayer, may tonight be the night of new beginning. May tonight be the night that difficult things will become easy for them. Father, we receive them with joy and we call them members of our family. Therefore, bless them. Father, empower them. Father, enrich them. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. They will give you papers to fill and they will follow you up. Can we give them a good clap offering somebody? <laughs> Father, there are eight people who walked into this world in pain, depressed, agitated, and unhappy. Wherever they are, those eight persons, let your power be focused on them. And let the yoke be broken. Let an angel wipe away the tears. Father, on my right hand side and my left hand side, 
Make them willing to let go whatever the enemy is doing in their lives. Let them not sympathize with Satan. May they reject, reject Satan completely and totally and implicitly. And let an angel bring down beautiful handkerchief and wipe away their tears. And Father, whatever burden they have been carrying, they will carry that body no more. Father, move from person to person, from house to house, from family to family, and let the yoke be broken. Thou power of God, in the name of Jesus, move! Father, what has a beginning has an end. Whatever the enemy have been doing all these years will come to an end tonight. Father, they have suffered enough. Wipe away their tears. Father, wipe away their tears. I set them free from that bondage. Whatever makes them feel depressed and unhappy, let it be destroyed in Jesus' name. Father, arrive and scatter the enemies, and scatter the enemies, and scatter the enemies, and scatter the enemies. Father, there are eight of them. This is the night of freedom, the night of freedom. And let the power that to set them free begin to operate. May they be free, be free. Be free, be free, be free. Workers help us. The power is now going to move. Workers who have always helped us do it again. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The great tire Alleluia Alleluia The mighty God The great tire
And you know where they are standing. I demand they will not go home with this body. They have suffered enough. What has a beginning must have an end. Every problem has time limits. Therefore, these eight persons, whatever they are standing tonight before you, let the yoke they have been carrying be broken. Yeah. Father, on my right hand side, on my left hand side, and in front of me, you know where these eight people are standing. And let an angel be revealed to them. And let the yoke be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Thou power of God. Arise and let your people be set free. Father, this is that day you have promised me you will set your people free. It shall not be delayed, it shall not be postponed. You are a great promise keeper. Therefore, let the eight of them be set free. I demand that they sleep only for two minutes. Two minutes. Let it be profound sleep. Somebody help. Somebody help. Number two. Number two. Remaining. Number three. Remaining. Five. 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 Father, there are five more. Wipe away their tears. Let them go home rejoicing. The enemy cannot subdue them in your house. It shall not happen. Therefore, I demand their freedom. It shall be total freedom and complete freedom. On my right hand side, somebody help. That's number one. Number four. That's number, number five here. Number five. Number six. Number six. Remaining two. Remaining two. Mighty God, they are standing on behalf of their family members who are not even here. That's number seven. Remaining That's one. number seven. Remaining one. That's number eight here. That's number eight. That's number nine. That's number nine. Number ten. Number ten. Father, they are standing on behalf of their family. And whatever their family members may be, your power and anointing shall reach them there. 11. That's number 12. 11. Number 12. Number 12. Father, only you can do this. That's number 13. Number 13. And Father, whatever you have done this night shall be permanent. Members of their families shall not be mocked again. Whatever they have been looking for shall not be given to them. Father, turn their lamentation into laughter. And turn their disgrace into grace. And turn their disappointment into supernatural appointment. Arise. And let the enemies be scattered. Mighty God, may your children march out of this hall as great successful soldiers. Whatever and whenever they will fight the enemy, they will be more than conquerors. Father, May they know you personally and intimately and experientially and empirically and livingly and as a living reality. Let them know you intimately. 
as a man will know the back of his hand. Father, Father, you said there are two more people. And whatever those two are, let your power set them free. Let the chain be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. That's number one. That's number two. That's number three. That's number three. I have seen the Lord's goodness, his mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have seen the Lord's goodness, his mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I have seen the Lord's goodness, His mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I have seen the Lord's goodness, His mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. tonight, your weakness has become strength. In every battle you fight, you'll be more than a conqueror. This God will make your life, your walk through life very easy. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will remain your God and remain a God to you. Amen. There are four people who saw angels. If you are one of them, can you raise up your hand? During this prayer, the Lord opened your eyes. You saw one angel or two angels. But you are four in number who saw angels. If you are one of them, raise up your hand. We are going to give the Lord a good clap offering and celebrate you. Can I have those hands raised up? Four of you. Raise it very well. Raise it very well. Any hand? There's a hand there, number one. There's a hand there, one. There's a hand here, number two. Another hand, number two. Remaining two hands. I mean two people. Can I have those two people raise their hands? You lose nothing by raising up your hand. Rather, this God will bless you. How many hands over there? One. That's, that's three. three. Remaining one. Who is that one? Raise it well. Give them a good clap up from somebody. 
Father, tonight shall be our night of new beginning. Difficult things shall not become easy for us. And Father, I declare we are now unstoppable. No enemy shall stop us. In every battle we shall fight, we shall be more than conquerors. Father, whatever I have said over your people, bring it to pass. And bless them. And honor them. And lift them up. Let the handkerchiefs of heaven drop on them. And let their tears be wiped away. Father, thank you. You are mighty. There is none like you. We shall cry no more. Because we have wiped away our tears. As we go home, we shall be protected. As we go home, our sleep tonight shall be healing sleep. As we go home tonight. Whatever any sickness has been hiding, that sickness will hide no more. Whatever problem the enemy has placed on our way shall now become our promotion. Father, I declare everyone here blessed, and they shall be blessed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Give the Lord a Pentecostal clap offering, somebody. Cars and one house. Come, I have two cars in my hand. No, three cars. Two cars and one house. Okay, two cars and one house. To show that our God is a promise keeper. Every promise he has made to you shall now come to pass. If you don't have a car in your garage, there shall be one soon. If you don't have a house of your own, there shall be one soon. You will not retire without means of mobility. You will not retire without a house. They are on their way. For this one, Father, protect your children. These vehicles will not harm, will not kill. May it enhance the life you have given them. And Father, bless them and protect these vehicles and the house. Every voice that you to speak from that, that house shall speak no more. Amen. It shall be so. Amen. In the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please, if you have those forms that you received as you came up front, make sure that you give it to one of the ushers or you bring it up to the front. Please, those of you who were not here for the first offer,